Okay, welcome back everyone. Uh, this is episode four of our RPG world. Um, as you can see, today we're going to be working with our tiles. I'm going to start the world and then we all might also add um, an AI. Uh, we'll get started on the, the monsters. So first off, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new tile set. Click it. Oh, sorry, before that, you guys to go to cell and make sure you you have everything as 16 so 16 16 custom transform 16 16. the reason is because the grass we're going to be using is 16 16 by 16. Um, some of the decor is like eight by eight as you can see this one's uh, 16 by 16. it depends on what you have so you just want to you'll want to figure out what tile set size you have and figure that out for the size. So for us, it's going to be 16 by 16. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the grass and we're just going to drag that in. We're going to do a new single tile. I'm going to click that. And we're just going to draw over the grass. Try to make sure you don't go out of it. Uh, otherwise, you'll get some weird stuff. And then if we just click new single tile again, that'll add it. And now we have our grass. So now when I draw, if I left click, it'll draw grass. And if I left click, it'll erase it. All right, um, another thing, actually not, yeah, uh, sure. We can try to add decor. I've actually never tried this, so give it a try. What you can do is uh, hit new single tile again. And you're gonna want to shade uh, okay, I'm gonna make it bigger so I can see it. Shade right around there. And then new single tile, and that should make one grass decor. There we go. So now we have a normal grass and a decor one. All right, so now if we go to our world and we add the tile set that we just made into our world, so we can drag it to the top if we want. Um, a quick way to do this, so this might, might not be the best way to do it, but this is the way I'm going to do it because what we can do is we can easily hold shift, left click, but no, sorry, we don't want that one. We want the grass. So again, left click, shift, left click, and then drag. And then same thing, shift, uh, click, shift. I'm going to drag all, no, sorry, shift first and then drag. I'm going to drag all the way down. We're going to make the world as big as I want. And then what we can do is we can go to the top, and just use the filler tool. And we can even add some little grass areas. And so you can kind of edit your world however you want, like this. This might not be the best way, obviously, again, but this is just a good intro to how to get started on an RPG like this. Uh, we'll also delete this Gido icon. So now when I uh, live test, I can now move around in a world. All right, so now you might notice that the camera goes outside of the world. This is a very, this has a very easy fix. If we go to the camera, we can go to the, I'm going to have to find it. It's moving limits. Here we go. So if we go to the limit, the left and top are going to be the top limit and the left limit. And we can just set those to zero. And then for the right and left, or sorry, right and bottom, what we can do is that we want it set to the point where the grass ends, right? So we can actually just end it at, this is a weird number, but 0, 85, and we can also do 10, 95. And we'll leave it like that for now. Oh, there we go, zoom out. All right, so now if I go all the way up, obviously my player goes out of the world, but that's okay. Um, for now, the camera does not, no longer go outside. All right. Let's get started with our bats. So the first thing I want to do is I'm actually going to 
create a new folder, and this will be called uh, enemies. And in this folder, we're going to create a new node. And that new node is going to be a kinematic body. We're going to name it slime. I'm going to just save it before I do anything else, and I'm going to put it in the enemies folder. All right. Um, next thing, we're going to make sure we add. Okay, I want you to pause actually and add what you think we're going to need for our enemy. Okay. Um, obviously, we're going to be using. Um, so unpause the video, whatever. We're going to be using collision shape. So that's the first thing. I will do a little circle. And then we're also going to add, what do you call it? Animated sprite. In this animated sprite, we're just going to a new sprite. And then we're going to make idle. And then we're going to do run. And then we're going to import those. So if we go to characters, slime. I have no idea which, what these are, so it's going to take me a second to realize. Uh, I think it's actually seven frames. Okay. I think this is idle. Um, I think there's an attack frame as well. I think this one's the attack one. Oops. Okay, and then death. Let's have the death one on the bottom. And then run. We can import that. That should be this one, I believe. And then hit. I believe this one is you getting hit, is this one. All right, so now if we go to the animated sprite, we play it, we'll do idle. All right, awesome. And we'll just move it up just slightly. We will lock that. And we're going to make this, actually, we're going to change this into a rectangle. We're going to make it ever so tiny. There we go. All right, and now what we can do is we're going to add into our world. So now our little player is no longer lonely. Now, now we have a little player. There's even collision. Now the they don't go through each other as well. Um, obviously, they do, it doesn't work too well. Um, the player doesn't do anything with it. You can't attack it. The slime doesn't chase you. None of that. Um, we're going to add chasing. So in order to add a chase function, kind of, what we're going to be adding or introducing is area 2D. So area 2D is very similar to collision. collision. However, it's something that instead of colliding with, it's going to essentially check for something if it's in that area. So we're going to make this unique. Or here, sorry. We'll just delete this. Ignore what I just did. We're going to add a new collision shape. All right? And this will be a circle. And we're going to make it slightly bigger. Uh, we're going to name this. Detect player. All right, so now we have a collision that's detecting player. And now we're going to go to enemies and we're going to make a, where is it? New script. And we're going to name this AI general. So this is an a, a AI script that we're going to have for all the general AIs. We're going to have the detect player. We're going to do body entered. And we're going to connect it to the slime. OK? And we're going to delete all this. We don't need any of it. All right. And so now, the first thing we're going to want to do is um, we're going to want to check if the body is equal to the player. So if, and the way I do this is if body.name equal equal player 
then print. Ah. True. Okay, what am I doing here? Oh, no, that's right. Okay. And I want to go and double check that this is the same. Okay. And so now what I can do is every time I enter it, it'll click true. Right? However, that's not what we want. We want it to chase the player. So in order for it to chase the player, there's a few things we need. First, we need to add a speed. Right? We're going to make this 70. Or we'll make it like 30 for now. Make it relatively slow because slimes are pretty slow. Okay. And then we're going to add a physics process function. And we're basically going to move and slide. I'm not sure why it's not auto correcting. Um, speed. Then let's see if this does anything. Oh, sorry. Speed. Ah, this is why. Because we want this to be kinematic body 2D. Okay. <laughs> sorry, I did not realize that was an error. That's why I wasn't autocorrecting for me. Okay. And now, yeah, I have no idea what speed is, or it's obviously not going to work yet. So we're going to have to fix that. Okay, so um, basically what move and slide needs is a direction of vector two times speed, essentially. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a direction, which is going to be the direction of the player. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it up here. Direction. We're going to be constantly updating the direction, right? Because the direction is always moving depending on where the player is around the enemy. So we're going to get the position of the player and subtract it to our own position. And then we're going to normalize it. However, we also need the variable player, which I'm going to do by doing this. So this isn't the best way to do it. However, it's a way to do it. So what we can do is we can get parent and then get node dot player. So it's going to go up to the world and it's going to go down to the player to find it. Okay. And now if I run it, oh, normalized. Is that right? Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, wonderful. So even if I'm outside the area, it'll still chase me now. So now I have like a little pet. So if this is like a function you wanted, you can have like a little pet. And yeah, that's the monster. One more thing before, I'll end the video here, but one more thing before I do that, um, I'm going to go back into the slime. And in here, I'm actually going to do get node and make space dot play run. So now, now it's running towards the player. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. I will end the video here. Um, next video we'll be adding, we'll finish it, be finishing the AI. We'll be adding some idle animation, some, we'll be finishing the player detection, etc. Um, so let me know or subscribe and like the video for that. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys.